I am the Commissar. That's my name. Forged Alliance Forever. That's the game. Who have we got? With a claim to fame. Today, we'll be seeing the West team facing off against the East team on this 15k map, which is randomly generated. Five players aside, let's meet them. Going first, for the Western team, in the corner we have Azuros, the highest rated player in the game by far at 2200. He's playing Eon in brown. To his south. This is the lowest rated player in the game. It is Nobby Starlink. TV Nobby Starlink. Is that like TV's Frank from Mystery Science Theatre? I hope so. Anyway, he's 1100 rated. He's playing Seraphim in red. In the central position, we have C2118 Freedom. We've seen him under that name before, but most recently we saw him as Omega Trocity. He has now put his name back. He is 1900 rated. He's playing Seraphim in dark green. At the back, in the air position for the western team, we have Babel. 1400 rated, playing Eon in grass green. And last but not least, for the western team, this is Dorset in the forward position. And he is 1200 rated. He's playing Cybron in burgundy. And the Eastern team. In the corner position for the Eastern team, we have their highest rated player, BRS DCCC97. That's a mouthful, isn't it? I'm going to call him BRS. He is 1900 rated, he is Cybron, and he is in yellow. Next to him, we have Ayahuasca Dest. He's 1300 rated, playing UEF in grey. In their central position, we have Blissful Noob, who is 1700 rated, playing Cybron in Mauve. In their air position, this is Shaker, who is 1500 rated. He is playing Cybron in Orange. And last but not least for the Eastern team, and already way forward, this is Black Phoenix. He is 1400 rated. He is UEF in Purple. Quick look at the map. It's got this nice open combat area in the middle with a couple of expansion slots and mixes in it. And then it's got these rather more choke pointy areas in the north and south, each with three decent expansions. And there's reclaim just dotted everywhere around this map. Nice to just reclaim wherever you want. Phoenix here has already come forward and he is getting factories up in this expansion where he's already put down the mexes and he's got four queued up so that's pretty fast dorset hasn't even reached his equivalent position however on the other side ayahuasca hasn't reached this expansion whereas nobby absolutely has reached his equivalent meanwhile a transport comes out loaded with engineers for azuros and he drops them into this expansion, going for a factory first so he can defend it before he goes for the mexes, and then queuing up some more. Whereas BRS, he has got factories and mexes queued up here, but they're from this engineer, which has still got quite a walk before it gets to this location, so as you was definitely faster there. Labs coming out from Freedom and pootling around. That's a very early land HQ upgrade from Ayahuasca who has gone T2 at just 4 minutes. Has he got the eco to cover it? I don't know. Only 22 eco production, that's not really a great deal. I don't think he's got enough eco to cover that. These Selene's coming out, but I fear that some of them are going to run into Blissful's com. This for sees one and shoots it. The others are not going to be happy about that, and Freedom wisely turns them away. Meanwhile, look at this. Tanks have come in from Phoenix, and they have killed all the engineers in this base, but thanks to the factory from Azuros, 
he has been able to stop the raid in its tracks and will hold on to the space and he just needs to produce one energy here and he'll be fine and be able to reclaim that well I say that but there's a decent amount of spam coming in we'll have to check back on that in a moment Shekar remaining closer to his base although he is coming forward Babel also coming forward to assist their central colleagues in setting up their positions and Babel starting the air upgrade that's a reasonable time to start the air upgrade don't think oh maybe Shake is actually going to get there first but we'll see that in a moment and there has been that spam coming across here from Phoenix but thanks to this PD and his tanks Ayahuasca, um, Ayahuasca, Azuros, that guy has seen it off meanwhile Nobby has brought his com forward here and Phoenix doesn't feel able to attack yet but he is going for the gun upgrade and that will help him out meanwhile Dorset pushes in against BRS BRS has some tanks here but he doesn't have a factory up yet and that might prove his undoing Dorset's got a decent amount of stuff coming in over here though Dorset's standing on his own with just a few engineers and if Ayahuasca pushes in with this he might prove to be in trouble We'll see about that very shortly. Good push coming in here from Freedom, but Shaker has got it with his com, and it's sure it's going to take out a mix here and maybe this mix too. But between Shaker's com and this PD, I think they're going to be fine. Yeah, down they go. Those tanks and those tanks will clear it up. So Dorset has been able to knock BRS off the six batch and he's got no more engineers here. And then falls back as he sees a decent amount of spam coming thanks to his spy planes telling him what's going on. He's going for T2 and he's already got a point defense to, to fall back to should anything go wrong. But Ayahuasca is pushing in, and Dorset may have an issue stopping all this. Ayahuasca doesn't have any upgrades on his com, going commando, as it were. But these are only NGs, and that PD is the only defense that Dorset has. He starts a T2 PD, but immediately thinks better of it when he sees quite how much spam Ayahuasca has brought to the table over here. Dorset is going to be forced to fall back and BRS has brought his com down here. This slot with the com could defeat this slot without the com and that may be what BRS is planning. Meanwhile, thanks to some decent overcharges, these turrets are going down and Dorset is being forced to fall back. And I think this is a mistake. Sure, um, Nobby has enough spam to push Black Phoenix back even with his gun as it stands. Though this spam might have something to say about it, but that splash is a super expensive upgrade. That's the Sarah uh, gun upgrade that gives you quadruple damage and vast blast radius. Makes you like full on experimental in firepower when combined with the other gun upgrade. But it's really expensive. He hasn't got the gun, and if you were going to invest in that, you really need nano. I would not go for that without going for regular gun and nano first. So that could be stretching it a bit this early in the game from Nobby. Meanwhile, BRS is indeed pushing down here in the south, and if he can break through, Dorset reinforcing here to stop BRS coming this way, but I think he needs to be worrying about here, because look at this. This clutch of mixes belonging to Babel, and Shekar does indeed have the equivalent here, so that's good, giving those mixes to the air player so that they can afford their upgrades, but that clutch of mixes is all T2, and it is quite a risk for Babel if BRS can just push through here. Quick look at this where Freedom is getting the regen aura. Now I've been seeing that a bit more on server comms recently. It does give you some tasty upgrade. It, it, 
in terms of extra hits if you're supported by spam and we'll have a look at the effect of that in a little while but right now we need to look over here because that's a lot for Phoenix it might even be able to overwhelm Azuros here but he's going for Nobby Nobby's already put a lot of resource into that splash upgrade this is not enough to stop Phoenix's gun com and if this one pushes in I think Nobby might be in severe trouble quick look over here where these T2 Mexes are indeed falling to BRS but we need to have a look at Nobby as in comes Phoenix, in comes this huge amount of spam and Nobby's trickling up a little bit to help out but that doesn't feel like it's going to be enough he's getting blocked on his own units he's being swarmed by Phoenix Phoenix's guncom is getting the shots in Phoenix's spam is getting the shots in Phoenix's spam is clearing up his other spam this is good though he's easily got enough to kill Nobby here so he's moving this away where it won't die in the combo he's also trying to get this out of there Nobby down into the red deep down into the red boom Nobby dies at 11 minutes he's our first ejection from the game and indeed Phoenix has saved these troops Shaker despite being the air player also got a decent amount of troops on the ground but these boys are heading up to see what they can do against Azuros space however Azuros has T2 support factories here producing blazes blazes are very good against T1 Azuros himself has the gun upgrade on his comm and by those powers combined I'm pretty sure that Azuros will be able to see that off without a problem. Meanwhile, we have Ayahuasca pushing on Dorset and with T2. That's Pillars, that's Mongeese, Dorset. He's got T2 upgrade and he's got these point defences, 2T2, 2T1, but he may be in a bit of trouble. Quick look over here though, this is brutal. However, I think we need to be looking here at this time because Dorset is losing PDs fast thanks to Ayahuasca with gun and T2 and with T2 units in support and he charges down on Dorset he's got PDs to fall back too but I don't think he's got enough and Ayahuasca is not losing hit points and Dorset is and Ayahuasca is supporting with bombers he sees this PD but he just walks away from it he doesn't need it he just needs to chase down Dorset and Dorset is gonna die Quick check up here, these T2 point defences from Babel have stopped it, but he's taken out all of these mexes belonging to Babel, and that is pretty brutal. Dorset into the red, bombers fall upon him, shots coming in from Ayahuasca, Dorset's not going to survive this. Boom, Dorset goes up at 12 minutes 47. Now we ought to have a look at the air player's equals to see just how much damage that raid from BRS did. Babel has an eco of 69 and Shaker has an eco of 114 so that's a huge difference and overall Team 2's eco is 60 ahead of Team 1's eco so the Eastern team have a huge lead and though Freedom has brought some Ilshis in to try and stop this it's not going to stop a gun T2 com with the help of this spam from BRS and it looks like some good edge building there as Ayahuasca might be planning to set up a firebase here that would be a nice location to stop units coming through here control a bit of territory around here Freedom is pushing in on this floor and have a look at this. See this tank? That tank has 336 hit points thanks to that region upgrade I was talking about. Whereas a regular fam has only 280. This has got a lot of spam but he, and he's got some T2 in there to counter the Oshis that Freedom has brought but he's going to need to use it. Up here, Azuros is pushing Phoenix as well. So we've got these two shenanigans going on here. This is a decently sized force from Azuros, and he has got gun and shield on his comm. With shield generators supporting and flak, so that's a pretty tough comm. And 
I think he's going to wipe over this base. Shaker is sending units to support, but I don't think they'll be in time to say this. And But Shaker has a strat out, which he is using to bombard Azuros. He takes out the Cheer Generator and then heads straight on for this expansion. And I was getting the tactical missile, but look at this incursion. That's a huge amount of stuff rolling in from Ayahuasca and BRS. Lots of T2 in there, pillars generally, supported by, from the air and rolling over this base, which Freedom inherited, well, uh, as he was inherited and gave to Freedom from Dorset. I'm surprised how much of that survived. Shaker and Phoenix have between them driven as he was back a bit. And look at that, that strat's got a perfect hit in there, taking out some decent eco from from Azuros. And of course, thanks to the eco damage that was done to Babel, he's a bit behind in getting the ASFs out. And that's a lot of Ilshis coming in towards Blissful. And he's only got a little bit in support, there's this gun nano region come coming in. Is this one going to survive this? You know, I think he might not. He's got APD, but most of these units are engineers. And look at these Ilshis in the region over with 3,000 hit points. That's amazing. And look how fast they regenerate. This one's not getting out of this, is he? Boom! And so that's our third player taken out, bringing it to 4v3 in favour of the Eastern team. But, look at this. I think we need to go to split screen to watch these two things here. So, here on the left, this force from Shaker has just come running in past Azuros and is getting into Freedom's base on this side down here we have Babel having his base eaten up by the tanks of Ayahuasca and the at T2 and the T1 units from BRS so this is horrible for the Western team but on this side Freedom is making a bid for well Freedom and charging in with his com which we saw Blissful complaining about just a moment ago Sarah Nano Gun and double regen and that regen is boosting these Ilshis but I think that even with these Ilshis that's going to be quite a lot for that comp to handle so we'll have to check back on it a lot of mechs is being lost for Babel fewer for freedom here because not only has Azuros defended with these gunships but he has a line of PDs which is stopping BRS coming this way and is stopping Shaker coming this way that said he has lost these so a decent amount. Let me die, says Freedom. I can't play like this. I think he's actually complaining about the lag. Will he get much done? He's trying to focus down the land HQ. But he dies and he doesn't. I don't think he's really taken out anything except for maybe that one factory. The HQ's still up, the mechs are still up. That may not have been a great move from Freedom. And Azuros inherits his base. But we'd better go back to single screen. Quick look at Azuros, who has Harbies out now, and in combination with his gun shield com, is able to hold back Phoenix. But look at this, Babel is in the yellow. He's naked. And he is surrounded by pillars and lobos from Ayahuasca. And Ayahuasca is throwing those missiles from his com into Babel's base, and he's hitting things. So this, this feels pretty painful for Babel. Babel has been given freedom to a base by Azuros. And he's swarming labs in defense. Look at this, look at this huge scuttly swarm of labs. And they will mob down this arty, that's for certain, but will there be much utility after that? Babel going for the gun. 
but look how much he has to rebuild this is horrific and BRS is just coming in and taking this area ayahuasca has got some of this and the labs may see about that good work being done by Azuros Com up here and he has got these Harveys in support he's got flak he's got shear this is a generally good set of stuff for Azuros Ayahuasca meanwhile has got T3 on his com and is adding ravages to his little firebase here and that will make life very hard for poor old Babel Well, Babel has now caught his eco up to that of Shaker. Oh, of course he has. He's got Freedom's entire base, and they're just missing the um, a base in the south. So that's pretty good from Shaker to have the eco that Babel has when he's only got one base, and it's a testament to how much damage the eastern team have inflicted on the western in this raid. However, Babel now has the full gun, though not the extra range as yet. Is he going to go straight for that? Yes, he is. And as well as Harvey's, thanks to his inheriting Nobby's stuff, Azuros has Othiums. And Babel is sending Ilshis into support. I fear those Ilshis will be better used over here, to be honest, but... Who am I to judge? Well, I'm the caster, that's why I'm to judge. I am going to look at it, and I am going to judge. Let us be clear about that. Azuros tries pushing Phoenix with Harveys, but these Percy's do well against the Harveys. These gunships are going to do well against the Harveys, and I'm sure that Shaker has air control. We'll check air control in a moment. And so, although he loses a bit of his firebase, and is forced a little bit back. Phoenix isn't hurt too much, but there's more stuff massing up here. Quick air check. Shaker has 24 ASFs, and Babel has only two. So those gunships are going to be able to saunter around the map with carefree abandon, shooting up whatever they want. ACU says Dorset, he's pointing at where BRS's ACU is, right at the back of his base, and BRS gets our first XP up, it's a Megalith, he's skipped to what the Monkey Lord phase that many Cybran players would go through at this stage, and said, nope, I just want the bombardment power, I've even been creeping forward slowly here, so let's double down on that, and he's gone straight for a Megalith. And these units which Babel has been gently gathering are just being mashed by the gunships. He needs he needs a load of AA and I don't know where he's going to get it. A couple of Sams might be the choice over here, but I don't know. And Sheik is still gathering T1 tanks. I don't know if that's so useful when Babel has the ability to produce T3 as does Azuros and they are doing just that. And it seems like Babel's decided to stop his lab shenanigans. Meanwhile, Ravager creep from Ayahuasca. Ever forward, these gunships continue to advance, but there is now a SAM. The, some of these are T3, though. That's, what, three whalers for renegades. And it looks like he's going to need some more anti-air than that. However... That mega was a threat, but BRS is not alone in producing experimenters. We have a GC stomping forward here from Azuros, getting ready to throw fire from its face. And we can see as these ASFs move in this direction that Azuros has since we put up AAs of all levels all around his base knowing that his team doesn't have air. Shaker getting some pushing done with these tanks, but when you realize that the gunships just cleared all this up and are continuing to clear all this up, it becomes less impressive. The T3 pushes in for 
as he was and Black Phoenix falls back a bit Shaker has a brick here so Shaker is at T3 land as well as T3 air and there are Percy's for Phoenix whose name temporarily escaped me for a moment there in combination with his gun T2 com I think he'll be able to hold these off but he won't be able to hold the, off this GC does he know about the GC? he does not so that could come as a nasty surprise use overcharge as ayahuasca only reason com is still there it wouldn't still be there if you knew about that GC my dude but we have two shenanigans going on here I think we need to go to some split screen on the left Baber has to worry quite a lot about the fact that there's a mega coming up there does he know about it he does not on the right poor old Phoenix has just been caught out by that GC and but, he, but the GC stops focusing him. Ah, there we go. Boom. Phoenix is taken out. And there is a monkey coming up from BRS. But GC beats monkey. So we'll keep on watching that. Nothing but T1 bombers now, please, says Blissful. Suggesting that the T1 bombers be used on the GC. And it's a good bet. But I think that GC is about to defeat the monkey, but Babel is advancing. And that's because the, the Mega is coming up here in combination with a big heap of lawyers, and they're just crashing his base. And Shaker's tanks in support. This feels almost like we're on the way to a base trade, what with this up here and this down here. Baber's com is being bombarded with stuff and spam, but the real threat is this. And it would be wise, I think, for Azeroth to push up and just clean up this whole area up here with this GC. Baber is taking hits and might want to fall back a bit. He's got to be careful, but... This is brutal. We'll look at his com again in a moment, but... Ow, this is made of pain. There are a lot of T2 PDs, but the Mega will easily handle those, and they're being distracted by this general useless spam from Shaker in terms of actually getting damage done, but it's not at all useless in soaking up fire. And the Mega is targeting the power generators, which is a great core. Meanwhile, that spam is actually a threat to Babel. But, where's that GC going? That GC is going over down here towards Shaker's base. That could be a good call. But, Shaker's building the cloak. Shaker finishes the cloaking. He was about to start the laser, but he cancels it. But that GC won't be able to see Shaker's pom. Babel is just blapping away at these units while the Mega... Ooh. Babel doesn't have an answer to these three whalers, though. Actually, he's got some ASFs up here. We can just see them there. They're going to die to these ASFs here, but they might be enough to die of the gunships. Meanwhile, look at this. Look at this. He can't see the comm. This comm is just happily blapping away at the GC, and they can't see it. And the gunships do die. But Babel is badly hurt. Othium's come in to help him from Azeroth. But there, there's Percy's in here in this spam coming up. And there's also a chicken heading south from Azeroth. Now that they've... Boom! Babel is caught out by the Percy's. Didn't quite miss that. Not quite a Guile. Fewer com kills missed than Guile. I'm going to count that as half. However, this chicken is engaging this Mega. Now, ch Crab beats Chicken. But, with the help of this, and certainly Crab beats Chicken with the help of all those Corsairs. But with the help of the Iron Storm, I think the GC will be able to finish off that Crab. Down goes the 
chicken, the GC fouls on the crab, but the Ion Storm here is going to open up and proc that crab straight to death. Boom! Right, back over here. This Mega is still up and running, and what has Azurus got to stop it? Well, that looks like a Tsar, and that will be able to stop it. Over here, the GC is walking into what was Blissful's base from the top. Shaker has brought his comeback, we can see there, to rebuild his invisible sneaky Cybron com. But that GC is going to go down to all the point defence, of which is an awful lot, and T1 bombers coming in from Ayahuasca, along with more courses to finish it off. Over here, that crab is about to be targeted by the Tsar, and unless Shaker has his eye on the ball, that Tsar is absolutely going to wreck the crab. And a decent amount of T3 coming in from Azuros to support it. That GC is still shooting at things, but it, and it's killed a lot of the PD, but it is finally mobbed down by the bombers. I think we can go back to single screen. So over on this side, we do still have a few T3 units out here for the Eastern team, but Azuros, who is now on his own against the against the three players remaining from the East. He has got a decent amount of T3 in there, including a decent amount of flak, not to even counting the Tsar's own AA guns, and so Shaker finds that he can't handle it, and this lone crab has no answer whatsoever to the Tsar, and is just going to die to it. I feel that, rather than push it down here, that GC from as it was should have come up and finished this off. Because now, there's T3 production here, there's a defence here. This could be quite an irritating little holdout for BRS, if you're Azuros. And there's all you could do here, little bits of T2 artillery to just block all of this expansion and stop all this happening. Maybe even a fat boy with this amount of T3 production. The Tsar has wandered a little bit over some anti-air from Ayahuasca and falls back, but now there's a chicken joining it, and this feels like a not insignificant force from Azuros that could get some damage done. Up here, Azuros has a lot of T1 factories spamming arty to try and take this out, but that T1 arty will be no match for this vast bank of T2 point defence, so he'll probably realise that in a moment and try something different. The Tsar's shield is almost down. It is down. And the Tsar is now looking quite undefended. A decent dive from Shaker could take that out. But what am I talking about? Shaker's been utterly trashed by that GC. So do they have... Well, BRS has unsurprisingly gone into T3 air, as he must now that that's happened to Shaker and since Ayahuasca has been focusing more on the land game. This is still a formidable force, but there's a lot of ravages here. He'll have to be very careful if he wants to push in. And BRS uses his few ASFs combined with his Corsairs, because don't forget that Corsairs are not just bombers, they are fighter bombers. He dives the Tsar. He's using a lot of air, but and out pop the units on board, but they were only scouts. And this Tsar is going down. Azuros loses the Tsar to being mobbed down by a few ASFs and a big heap of Corsairs. Meanwhile, we see those ravages opening up on that push from Azuros. And with the defences from Ay Ayahuasca, with this new Mega coming up from BRS, and with this huge horde of Loyalists also from BRS, I don't think that's going to make much progress. Now, we're at the half hour mark. At this point, I traditionally ask you, who's going to win? Now, I won't know if you cheat and look at the end, but you will know your limits. Well, maybe you don't, but, okay, be honourable. Whatever, tell me who's going to win in the comments below. Timestamp your guess.
this push has just been cleaned up, like we said. Look at that. That's 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 brutal. How, and it must have left tons of reclaim. Look at all this reclaim across the map. Though the base that used to belong to who was that originally? That was Freedom, I think. Ayahuasca is getting the mess out of it, but I'm surprised by Ayahuasca Azuros. They both begin with A. Don't blame me. Either way. I am surprised by how close the Ecos are. They're within a hundred of each other, despite the fact that Azuros lacks all of this. So that's pretty good ecoing from Azuros. Meanwhile, he was trying another push with a decent amount of T3 and a chicken, but it has been forced back again. This time, though, he hasn't just pushed it in and lost it. He's regrouping, and he's got another chicken in there to help. And just like I said he should, BRS has built a fat boy in this northern bitter expansion, this base that used to belong to Phoenix, and he is pushing out. But, will the fat boy have an answer to the Tsar? I don't see a vast amount of AA in there. But the Tsar stops. Why does the Tsar stop? I'm not sure I agree with that. And these arties are still being wasted. Azuros needs to get a handle on that, especially with this Mega walking in. A fatty and a Mega with another fatty on the way. This could be very dangerous for Azuros to stop if it comes pushing this way. And there's another Mega plus this big chunk of T3, mainly Percy's, from Ayahuasca. There are two chickens in here, but I think that with this amount of TP support, the Mega will be able to take the two chickens. Uh, oh yeah, look at that. One chicken down, the Iron Storm will cause damage to the other and damage a lot of this T3, which is uh, by necessity just walking past it. Down goes the other chicken and the Mega's still in the green, look at that. And it backs away a bit, so as not to be damaged as much by the Ion Storm. Shaker starts the laser. Coke plus laser is a more honourable combination, in my opinion, than Telly plus laser. We'll see if he goes for something sneaky like a stealth transport. And that's a lot of labs coming out from Shaker and mobbing their way across the board. But these T1PDs will easily clear them up for quite cheap, as will these Harveys. Mercy's going in here from Azuros, but they didn't get anything done. Nice big heap of anti-air there from Ayahuasca. Meanwhile, this chicken over here is being hounded to death by Corsairs from BRS. Two more chickens here, not pushing in yet. The Tsar has joined them and will be able to provide some anti-air support, but I don't know if it will be able to provide that much anti-air support. I feel this one could just dive the Tsar, kill it and pull out as two more chickens approach. A quad chicken attack could be quite powerful, but what answer does Azuros have to this amount of air power? The answer is very little. He has got a little bit of flak in here, but is it going to be enough? The fat boy pushes in in the north a little bit, creeping slowly forward. As does the Mega surrounded by the swarms of labs from Shaker. Who just finishes his laser right there. I was expecting that Tsar to stay here and help with this effort, but it's moving north. It's going to try and defend against the Fatties and the Mega, and they don't have a great amount of ground-based answer to that, but there's this whole Air Force up here, and what can Azuros do about that Air Force? The answer doesn't appear to be a great deal. That said, by withholding the Tsar from going in, and not just sacrificing it, waiting until the units are a bit closer, he is increasing his chances, and he has got some ASFs. 
and they are killing Ayahuasca's ASFs, but they're not going to be a match for this vast force down here. Meanwhile, the courses just portal around picking off mixes. And the ASFs for BRFS put up their stealth. I think they're just trying to die with that Tsar. Or maybe not. They pull back a little bit. Well, the Tsar's accidentally or otherwise diving them. And it doesn't even get to fire a single beam down at either the Fatty or the Mega. That Tsar just dies. But what is this? That's a salvation and it's nearly half complete for Azuros. Could that be the turnaround that he needs? Both comms quite close here. If he just bombards that with the salvation, that could... I say both comms. Both comms with a shake on. I don't know if Shaker's got the eco to support his cloak if those comms die. Oh yeah, he will, because he'll um, inherit that 57k from BRS. So it wouldn't be the easy win that I was wondering it might be, but it would still be helping towards the win. In come two chickens with a third following up and they do take out the Mega, but both fatties are still operational and two fatties can easily kite a chicken. One fatty can easily kite a chicken. Especially if the chicken is walking in unsupported like that. And look at that horde of labs, that's what, 300 labs? Lots of labs is my point. And as if the fatty fire weren't enough, it's walking through its dead brother's ghost. And let's not forget that amid this swarm of labs, that's a lot of courses, and we'll see what they're doing in a moment. There are Megas here. Megas. Oh, that's a monkey there. But there were two Megas there coming in amid this swarm of labs. And what are these courses doing? Do they have a plan? I don't know. The salvation, though, is finished, and it opens fire. Boom. Where's it targeting? We'll see when it lands. Shaker getting the gun upgrade to go with his laser. That is pretty brutal. Down go all those four air factories and two ion reactors damaging another and another wave of Corsairs comes in can they get more done ow absolutely they can if I were Azeroth I would not be happy with that his air protection capacity has been severely diminished and that is yet more Corsairs is there another one Corsair is ha <laughs> ha my word you're laughing admit it That's what, 60 Corsairs? However many it is, it's a lot. I'm going to guess 60. And it's coming straight for the Salvation. Which they certainly know about. Oh, Shake, did you have to? I see him going for the teleporter. And after that, I was praising your bravery for not doing that. Anyway, in come the Corsairs, and many of them are shredded, but do you know what else is shredded? That Salvation is shredded, and uh, it's 99,000 Reclaim left there to be eaten up, but do you know what it isn't? It isn't a Salvation, and the Salvation is what Azuros needed. And as if that weren't enough, his Air HQ is taken out by the second turn of the Corsairs, 
And sure, they're all dead now, but what else is he going to do? Well, I'll tell you what he's going to do. He's going to restart the salvation on the wreck. And just look how little Azuros can see. Look how little of the map he owns. And now he's got only half the eco of the other team, surely. And with that wave, of course, coming, surely there's no way. But watch this. Shaker is teleporting in. That GC could have... He's seen it. He's seen it and he's turned the GC. I bet he's hoping it's BRS. But... It Shaker's just going to die for nothing, having been seen and getting GC'd as he turns around. And that salvation hasn't even been damaged. But, in come the Corsairs, dealing even more damage to poor old Azuros. Ayahuasca sends some strats, but the strats get nothing done against that shield. That said though, does it really matter? What has Azuros got left? He's got fatties on his doorstep. He's got... He has got nothing left as he was resigns. Eastern team win, Western team lose. It was a bold and daring attempt to save the game from as he was, and he held out like a hero. But... There's only so long you could hold out for a hero. Until the end of the night, I'm told, is the canonical answer to that. Anyway, do you think the West team could have won that one? Do you think Azuros could have saved it? If the GC had turned north after killing um, Phoenix to take out his old base, could that have given him the edge he needed rather than leaving it as a place to get eco and get fat boys for BRS? Tell me what you think in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I am the Commissar and I will see you next time.